hello everyone uh, welcome to the new problem so today the topic is standard deviation and uh, i'll explain through a problem what does standard deviation mean how it helps you what exactly are its properties a little bit so rather than explaining it theoretically i'll go with uh, some practical problem and i'll try to explain through a diagram what difference uh, actually you know uh, standard deviation creates in the data set so you can uh, think about this problem in this way that uh, these are the marks of two different uh, group of students that means uh, same test has been given to two different groups of students or uh, two different classes you can say uh, group x has uh, nine students were there group y there were nine students and uh, you know they have been given a test out of uh, 60 probably they have been marked on this test and these are the marks obtained by all students of uh, group x these are the marks obtained by all students of group y now uh, if i if i try to see which group has performed better so what i can do is i can simply calculate arithmetic mean as per my previous knowledge of statistics and i know the formula for arithmetic mean and i'm calculating it for series x first of all and i'll represent it by x bar and the formula for x bar all of us know that it is sum of n divided by n that means summation of marks divided by number of students and if i calculate it sum total marks divided by number of students and uh, that is going to give me a value 36 same way if i uh, calculate it arithmetic mean of y that means uh, students who are in group y and i calculate y bar that means average marks of students in a group y that will also come out to comes out to be 636 so if i only look into the average then uh, this doesn't give me a clean picture that which group is performing better for me both groups are performing same you know so it doesn't give me a very clear picture of the data if i look into the average only so now comes uh, the standard deviation comes in play which tells you that how the data is spread around the mean and uh, in couple of minutes you will definitely understand it that how standard deviation can help you understand the data better uh, though i have written the formula right here is going a little clumsy here but uh, i just try to separate it so though the formula of standard deviation is written here but i explain it through a different sheet so the formula of standard deviation the word is of course standard deviation so the formula of this standard deviation for us uh, can be given by a letter called sigma uh, basically this is the formula for this is the symbol which we use for population parameter i'm using it for sample here you can also use a symbol called small s but let's not uh, fall into that right now uh, the standard deviation can be given by the letter sigma some people make it this way some people make it little this way so you know and that can be given by x minus x bar square the sum of it divided by n minus 1 sample size minus 1 or number of observations minus 1 this is also known as this concept the denominator is also known as degrees of freedom bear me with the wrong spelling if i did something wrong so n minus 1 so x bar is mean of arithmetic mean or arithmetic average of series x and n the number of observations so same way if i want to extend this formula for series y since in my data set i have two different series so formula is going to be square root summation y minus y bar square divided by n minus 1 instead of series x i am taking series y so okay let's start with the problem and let's see how we can get the diff value of standard deviation here so i'm going to put it on one side so if you could recall the formula in the numerator i require x minus x bar square and in the denominator i need n minus 1 so i already know the value of x bar which is 36 so x minus x bar means x minus 36 this x bar is already here 36 uh, and you can refer the previous videos how to calculate arithmetic mean and you can see how this 36 value has been obtained but still if uh, some of you are still confused that how i got this particular uh, value of uh, arithmetic mean then simply what i have done is 
I have calculated summation of x here. So you can calculate summation of x which is 324. You can calculate summation of y here which is again 324 and you can simply divide it by number of values and the number of values if you see in this entire uh, data set then the number of observations are 9. So if you divide 324 by 9 you are going to get 36. Is, uh, I hope now you can calculate the arithmetic mean for x and arithmetic mean for y. It can easily be calculated. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, now, first thing is I need x minus x bar. So, x bar is already I know that is 36. Okay, y bar also is 36. So, what is x minus x bar here? So, 41, first observation is going to be 41 minus 36. 41 minus 36 which is going to give me a 5 here. Second observation is 46 minus 36 which is going to give me a 10. Third observation is 33 minus 36 which is going to give me negative 3. The next observation is 23 minus x bar which is 36 once again and that is going to give me minus 13. 40 minus 36 that gives me 4 25 minus 36 that gives me negative 11 33 minus 36 again negative 3 and 44 minus 36 which is 8 and 39 minus 36 gives me 3 so this x bar is 36 right here so let me plug it in here right so now it becomes x minus 36 now, uh, since in the formula the numerator is uh, sum of square of these uh, deviations from the mean, these values are actually deviations from the mean. That means how much uh, 41 is away from the central value, average value, which is 36. Now, I'm going to take square of them. Why? Because the property says the sum of these deviation will definitely be equal to 0. So, if I take their sum simply, it will become 0. So, that will not going to serve any purpose for me at all. So I'm going to that's therefore square them. So what is the square of 5? 25. Square of 10 is 100. 3 gives me 9. 30 minus 13 is square gives me 169. 4 is 16. That is 121. Then it, that is again 9, 64 and 9. And then I'm going to calculate sum of x minus x bar square. Total of all of it. And this gives me a value 522. Same process I am going to repeat for y bar here. Sorry for series y. I also know that y bar is also 36. So this is again going to be y minus 36. Where is y? y is here in this column. So the first observation is 19 minus 36. Which gives me negative 17. The second observation is 17 minus 36 that is definitely going to give me minus 19. The third observation is 21 minus 36 that gives me minus 15. The next observation is 29 minus 36 that gives me minus 7. The next observation is 40 minus 36 this 36 that gives me 4. Then 47 minus 36 that gives me 11. Then comes 42 minus 36 that gives me 6, 54 minus 36 that gives me uh, 18 and 55 minus 36 gives me a 19. Again this sum will become equal to 0 that is what I do not need. I do not need to put the numerator 0. So I am going to calculate y minus y bar square and the first is minus 17 square that gives me 289 the minus 19 square that gives me 361 then it gives me 225 then 49 16 121 36 324 361 and now i'm going to take its total that is going to be sum of y minus y bar square and that value is going to be 100 1782 1782 so I'll find out the standard deviation now. Let's see the standard deviation of x first of all. So
so uh, okay i'll use another sheet because it will become little uh, you know a little clumsy so i'll take another sheet here it is so okay so let's calculate the standard deviation for x i know the formula the formula is simply sum of x minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 now let's plug in the values i know what is x minus x bar square so if you look into x minus x bar square is it, it is 522 sum of x minus x bar whole square is 522 so uh, okay i'll just try to keep this thing in place that's fair so you can see the numerator right here 522 divided by n minus 1 so how many observations are there 9 so basically n is 9 so it is going to be 9 minus 1 8 so that is going to be square root of 522 divided by 8 so if i solve it it is going to give me a value 8.07 so that is the standard deviation for x let's calculate standard deviation for y I know the formula it is going to be sum of y minus y bar square divided by n minus 1 once again so okay let me make it a little better so what is sum of y minus y bar square let's shift the sheet a bit the sheet says that it is 1782 so it is 100 78 and then 2 divided by n minus 1 that means 9 minus 1 and that is going to give me 1782 divided by 8 and if i look into standard deviation of y from here then it is going to come to be 14.92 14.92 now if you look into the series the series y has a higher standard deviation in comparison to series x so now let's make out from this sheet series x has a higher standard deviation from series x y has a higher standard deviation x has a lesser standard deviation you can write it this way is greater than this now what impact this value creates that is what i'm going to discuss right here through a diagram so this is the diagram which i'm going to discuss i will also keep my data sheet on the top so that i can compare the values now the upper diagram is for series x and the standard deviation for upper diagram let me just just give me a moment i'll just figure it out the standard deviation for upper a series is 8.07 that is for x and the standard deviation for series y is 14.92 a higher standard deviation let's map series x and y on this data set so i'm going to put my series x and y here so let's start with x uh, i hope you could recall the average of series x which is 36 so 36 is right here at the center what is the first value 41 so where is 41 41 is here second value is 46 so 46 is right here the third value is 33 which is 33 right here then comes 23 23 is right here then comes 40 which is right here then comes 25 which is right here then comes 33 again right here and the last then the 44 and 39 so 44 is right here and 39 is right here so uh, I, i'll just diagrammatically see that how much how much how much space all the data is covering around mean so if i if i look into the space this much is the geographical area which is covered by all the observations either on left or right of the mean now my bottom scale is absolutely same it is not different at all 
so if you see 36 right at uh, right below it is 36 so the scale is absolutely same i have kept it absolutely same for this purpose let's map y now so what is the first observation in y that is 19 so 19 is here the second observation is 17 here the third observation is 21 which is here now the next observation is 29 so 29 is right here then the next observation is 40 40 is right here then comes 47 which is right here then comes 42 which is right here then comes 54 so 54 is right here and the last observation is 55 so 55 is right here let me let me map it once again that how much geographical area on a plot on a graph in fact how much i'm using the heavy word geographical area but you can say a graphical area because it is not the real state actually so you can see that look at look at the difference which has a higher standard deviation the y has a higher standard deviation so around mean it is covering a wide range on the number line while around mean it is covering a lesser range on the number line so higher standard deviation ensures the data is pretty much spread around the mean in uh, you know i would say i would say in the longer directions so this gives me a what kind of input this gives me a simple input that even if the averages are same and the number of students are same in the both the classes in classroom x or in class x most of the students are within a shorter minimum and maximum range where in classroom y the most of the in fact all the, the students have a very high minimum and maximum range so the variability is very high here the variability is very low here in this particular case so this gives me that the, here the stability is more the data is more stable in fact all students are uh, you know close to average performer but here some students are bad performance some are extremely good so the variability is very high so this is a more trusted data in comparison to this i also want to explain you the concept of variance right from here the variance is nothing variance is standard deviation square so variance is standard deviation square so uh, you can calculate variance in both the cases here that means in the first case as well as uh, in the second case and you can square the values and you can get the variance thank you very much